Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. For this vlog I would thought I'd show you everything that I'm growing indoors. And I'm going to start a Grow As I Grow series within my vlog for this year. I tried doing that on my other channel last year and I apologize for ending it, but it just became, became um, repetitive. So I was shooting videos on this channel, uh, showing you how to grow tomatoes, and I would go over to the other channel and redo the same video. It just it didn't make sense. But what I wanted to do for Grow As I Grow, rather than teaching, because I have plenty of the videos, you can just look on my channel, I'm going to just talk about the timing. Like, when am I getting them started here? Literally, Grow As I Grow in Maryland Zone 7, so you can follow along on the exact timeline. And I've started hot peppers down there as of yesterday. Today is February 2nd, and I've started my cool weather crops. I'll talk about them in a second. What I started two weeks ago, and that was on like, I don't know, January 18th or something like that. This would be my regular flat of herbs that I would start if I wasn't, you know, doing all the prop plants, which I start ahead of time so that when I shoot videos, you can actually see the plants. Oregano, thyme right there. I have chives, lavender, rosemary, lemon balm, all starting to come up. They're in the smaller cells. And rather than having to pot these up, starting them now, towards the uh, middle end of January, they can kind of stay in there and then I can get them outdoors. These plants, these herbs, don't mind a light frost. If we come back over on this side, these are the plants that I started early for videos, onions, and those are American uh, flag leeks on the right side. You can overseed them and have plenty of transplants to put out in your garden. There's probably 500 transplants right in there, all grown in a little bit of a space. I start these in the middle of December, probably best in Maryland Zone 7. Start them middle of January. They're going to go out in the garden while the frost and the cold is still around. Right in here you can see rosemary and they were all started in smaller cells. And look at all that rosemary. I have lavender back there too. Those plants require a process called stratification, which means that they need to have a cold period close to 32 degrees. Some people put them in a freezer. I put them in my refrigerator. You just want a cold period, 10 to 14 days, so that an enzyme that sits in the seeds that inhibits germination gets destroyed. And by putting them into your refrigerator, into your freezer, giving them 10 to 14 days in there, you kill off that enzyme. Well, you don't kill it off, but you break that enzyme down and they sprout a lot, a lot better. And you can just see, look at all that rosemary. And this is a great way to save money because rosemary and lavender is expensive. Thyme, different plants in there. And when you look over here, that's about two weeks worth of growth. Here are the props. And they started the same exact way. I just potted them up into the larger containers. And these are going to be able to go outside soon. They can take a light frost, but you don't want to put them out in the frost but you can start getting them used to the cold weather. So it's February, probably in March, I'll start transitioning them out and I'll also divide them in half again. So you start with cells just like that. And again, these could just stay in there and go right out into my garden. But if you were doing the plant yard sale, like I talked about, when you get the size, you divide them, put them into here. These were started middle of December. You can see all the growth come February 2nd. And then these will be able to be divided again. So you can really grow a lot of herbs for your gardens, for your friends, or if you want to do that plant yard sale. Different size containers sell all of these at my seed shop. And you may just want to start in the small standard ones you find everywhere, or you can start them in larger cells. This way you don't have to pot up. I'm going to show you some bigger tomatoes that I have um, and peppers on the other side in a second. So as your plants get bigger, this is one tip too, is my grow light station starts over here where the lights are a couple inches over the seed starting mix when germination happens. Once they germinate, they stay under there, I don't know, 10 to 14 days. And as they get larger, they come over here where the lights are higher. Because as your plants get bigger, you don't have to worry about them getting leggy and they can do with less light. So. It's actually 16 hours on over here, 8 hours off, and then it's somewhere 12 to 14 hours on over here. But when they get even bigger, they can use some of the window light. So like I'll rotate these down to the bottom, 
the other one's up and this way it gives you more space you don't have to pay more money to get more grow lights up here you can start using the window when the plants get to size so some of the things that I actually started now for my garden are let's go with let's see if I can pull this out I think I can do it without dropping it these are my cool weather leafy greens and this is anything that I'm going to be harvesting for leaves. I have endive, lettuces, Swiss chard, beets. I'm gonna do this for the beet greens. Bunch of kale, more endive in there, and some mustard greens, mustard greens in the back. Now, when you're starting your cool weather crops, the leafy greens, they can take a frost, actually. I've done plenty of videos where the leaves freeze outside. Come the warmth of the afternoon, the leaves are perfectly fine. Sometimes when you're starting your cool weather crops, uh, more so sometimes the broccoli, kohlrabi, cauliflower, they can get kind of tall and lanky and you think, well, maybe I don't have enough light. The reason is actually not because of the light, because I grow all mine just like that over there on the right. It's because it's warm and these are cool weather plants, that extra warmth from the lights and being indoors makes them grow taller and they can get a little bit lanky. So you can help deal with that by one, starting them in a cooler part of your house where it's maybe 50 degrees or lower 60s, or when they break the surface, take them outside and give them some sun, clouds, it doesn't matter. You want them to get the cooler temperature and that kind of helps slow things down and they stay a little bit more stocky. Now in here, I think I can pull that out too, are my peppers. These are hot peppers started these yesterday uh, February 1 I want to get a good 12 weeks worth of growth in here I've started them in the larger cells so that they can stay here longer and it'll just be a nice dense growth of peppers all in here when they get to actually I'll be doing a future video on that too when they get to about this size I'm going to be pruning the tops but I want to start my hot peppers they tend to grow a little bit more slowly and this year I want to get peppers as I want to break a record and start getting them early in the season, early, earlier than they've ever done that before. So the hot peppers, 12 weeks. So February, March, April, it's going to be 12 weeks of growth. Get them outdoors. So I hope they have bigger plants. Anyway, there's about 36 cells in here, I think. Uh, probably 25 different varieties of hot peppers. Some of them, like habaneros, um, I don't eat. I give them away. But I have Tabasco, Serrano, Ghost, uh, Cherry Peppers, Anaheim's poblanos, which I highly recommend. They're delicious and they're a little bit spicy. Facing Heaven I love, so I did four of those. That's what I use for my red pepper flakes. Anyway, now is a good time in Maryland Zone 7 to get your hot peppers growing. They tend to grow a little bit slowly in general than your cool weather, I'm sorry, than your sweet peppers. Sweet peppers I'll probably do today um, for the same reason. Even though, you know, eight or ten weeks will be fine to go outside, I want to get sweet peppers harvested by June and that's gonna to be tough middle of June will be fine but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and just really time all my plants this year to get tons of indoor growth transition them outside but once they get into the ground I want bigger plants I want to be able to eat peppers for a longer period of time. Same thing with tomatoes. Well, I'll go over to the other side here in a second, show you some of the bigger plants that I have. So if you want to grow as I grow, what I've gotten started now, the hot peppers, probably do the sweet peppers this week. My leafy greens. And notice that they're in smaller containers. I want these to get about four weeks of growth after germination and they can go outside, they can deal with the frost. Some of my bigger cool weather crops, I'm not going to pull that out because it's too heavy. I've got cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower. They were all started yesterday too. And they're in these bigger containers that I sell at the shop so that they'll get larger. I don't have to pot them up. They can stay in there. And the reason being is for whatever reason in Maryland Zone 7, timing's a little bit difficult to get a full head of cabbage, a nice dense head of broccoli and cauliflower because it's kind of cold and freezing 
and then we get a short period of the right temperature and then the hot weather sometimes rolls in and once the hot weather rolls in changes the flavor of the cabbage the broccoli and cauliflower instead of being like you know a nice dense head to pick it loosens up and it starts to flower I don't want that to happen so I'm gonna try and get these to a good size now six or seven weeks worth of growth from germination and then I'm gonna get them outside because what I found is, is I went outside uh, over January and my Brussels sprouts oh I forgot to plant those all right well the Brussels sprouts have to go in too my Brussels sprouts I have heading broccoli out there now even with these 18 degree nights what I think was is I've just been starting my broccoli cabbages Brussels sprouts too late in spring so I'm starting them earlier got to get a lot of growth in here and get them outside sooner because they can not only take a frost they can take a good freeze so we'll see what happens in there in case you saw them these are plants that are growing in the peat pots cucumbers way too early for that those were prop plants let me fix this guy those are more prop tomatoes I'll keep them somehow up here people always ask too what do I use mostly inside the house I use hydrogen peroxide when I need to to deal with issues back there on the left I have chemical fertilizers have fish emulsion right in there and worm castings dead center there the whole key I just wanted to go over is if you're fertilizing and feeding your indoor plants don't overdo it you can overlove them you can harm them try and stick around a 1 1 1 N P and K that means you often have to dilute these fertilizers down a whole lot also too I'll be doing a video this week or next week on starting your annuals and perennial flowers I got a lot of requests for that I just picked these up these are bulbs um, this is blazing star or uh, uh, the uh, liatris flowers they're bulbs but we're going to start them indoors in these larger containers so that we have really nice plants to put out early spring and maybe we'll get some blooms also at my seed shop I sell other seeds these are Bentley's um, seed packets they have instructions on the back but this is a flower pack there's a butterfly pack you can you know see the different ones in there anyway they're highly discounted so rather than paying a dollar seventy nine two bucks for packs of uh, flowers at your local stores you can order them for me and they're about a dollar they're discounted greatly you even have a sunflower pack in there and they're under the Bentley seeds they're not hand packed by my brother and I um, they're just another option because people wanted packs of seeds that um, also had instructions on the back and they wanted more variety so we went and, and started working with that company we come over across this way I've started asparagus you can see how big it is asparagus and they've been potted up into these pots they started in the little cells, overseeded, and the whole goal with the asparagus is just to get great root systems. Don't worry about the tops, and then when I put them outside, they'll establish nicely, and hopefully I get asparagus more quickly next year. Asparagus takes about two years. In here I have tomato plants and pepper plants, so these are going to be really large come May. So I'm growing some inside so that I can try and get peppers and tomatoes early. We'll see how that goes. And this is a potato plant, also doing an experiment. This was started from seed, not from a potato, but a tiny little potato seed. And it's growing really, really well. I want to try and find a way to get bigger harvests of potatoes, and starting from seed might be a way. Um, there are indeterminate and determinate type peppers. I'm still learning to, to kind of learn the difference. If, you know, you just saw my elaborate setup, if you just want to grow a couple of plants, I have a video showing you how to use that light already on the channel but you can just start a handful of tomatoes and peppers some herbs some flowers under something like this and you just transition them as they get bigger you move them over closer to a window start seed starting more you could turn this out you know give light to those plants however you want to do it but it's just a fun way to start on a, on a small scale and learn let's get back over here so this week I'll be doing videos on annuals and perennials be seed starting the cool weather crops I'll be talking about when you do that in more detail and really getting ready I think for an early spring you know our temperatures have been ridiculous here in Maryland zone 7 we've had 50 60 degree weekends and stuff like that 
The other tip real quick is these are containers from nurseries, Home Depot, all that. Start asking your neighbors and your friends to save all the pots for you because it'll save you a lot of money and you can start right in here. You don't have to pot up or when you're moving from these smaller cells like I just showed you, all those tomatoes and peppers that are uh, that I just showed you are on these big purple pots. It's perfect. They'll be able to stay in here a long time and I didn't have to pay anything for it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you want to follow the vlog, it's more talking and more what I'm doing rather than instructional. Just check out my YouTube channel for the instructions. But I'm going to be doing the Grow As I Grow series within that and just showing you what I'm exactly I'm doing with my seed starts, my personal seed starts, and how I'll be getting them into the ground planting my garden. Thanks for watching and please check out my seed shop. Check out the Bentley Seeds and if you want larger containers you can find them there.